Well, anyway, guys, I just was um, making a video on days in life of the transgender experience. Um, it's extremely hard. It's extremely um, difficult to live at your, as your authentic self. Um, we deal on a daily basis discrimination, negativity towards trans people, um, name calling, um, verbally abused. Some are forced to get into escorting, among other things, you know, getting involved in drugs and alcohol, trying to deal with the, um, the pain of being scarred from being transgender, you know, you know, just trying to numb the feeling, you know, to suppress the feelings of you being transgender. Me, um, I remember as long as I can remember at eight years old and I've always known I, I felt like a woman and I lived my life as a woman when I became 19. Um, from that point on, I witnessed discrimination. Um, you know, I tried to get jobs and I was denied, I was turned down. Um, you know, when I was in school, I dealt with bullying and all. That's why I got out of school. Um, and I started getting involved with the wrong people. Um, that's when I started realizing, you know, that being transgender is not a glamorous lifestyle. You know, it's a very depressing, very, um, you're always on your guard. You're always like defending yourself. You're always defending your character, um, your femininity, you know? And if you don't look a certain way like Carmen Carrera or, um, Gigi Gorgeous or, you know, the other ones, you know, then you're nothing. That's basically what society tells you to be. You know, so then you have transgender women that aren't able to get surgeries done. Um, then they overdo their makeup because they were bullied their whole life into like thinking that they were masculine and that they were unattractive. So they put on all this makeup to change their appearance because of what society told them that they weren't good enough. And I happen to be one of those prime examples, you know? I get some people say, oh, you don't need all this makeup. But because of how I was treated years ago, when I first came out as trans, this is why, you know, I overdo my makeup. Until I get facial feminization surgery, I'm gonna do heavy contouring, and the dramatic eyes. I play up my beauty. Like, I have beautiful eyes. So I'm going to play that up, you know? That's what gets me by, is my beautiful eyes. And my beautiful personality. That's which what makes me beautiful. You know, beauty is only skin deep. And, you know, you can get all the surgeries that you want. But if you don't feel beautiful on the inside, then you know what? That surgery ain't going to do shit for you. Gender confirmation surgery is not about looks. It's not about being gorgeous. It's not a superficial thing. It's a surgery for people that just want to live their true authentic self. It's not, you know, for a fashion show or who's the prettiest or who's more passable or who's living that stealth life. Because... What is possible? Even um, the most beautifulest transsexual that's like a supermodel still gets clocked as being transgender. You're always going to find the difference between a cisgender woman and a real female. I mean, a transgender female. Like, surgeries are... Um, great nowadays you know what I mean they have like it like it's very hard to tell you know 
a transgender woman to have the SRS done. Like, technology has improved drastically. Um, I just wanted to say, like, you know, like, there's all this, like, bashing in the community. Um, then you have men that are trans-attracted that, you know, go from one girl to another and play both sides of the fence. And they're always trying to get the most passable, the most beautiful, the transgender woman that has all the surgeries done. Like, if you don't have tits, I mean, if you don't have your breasts done, or if you don't, you know, if you're not beautiful or visually appealing, then it's like you're yesterday's trash. And it's like, you know, we are under scrutiny all the time. On a daily basis, we feel like we have to be 100% perfect all the time. And, you know, always walk on eggshells around cisgender people. Like, I go on, um, I go on, uh, whatchamacallit, like Periscope and all these other things. And right away, yo, you were dude, you're this, you're that. Without even saying hi or getting to know me, right away they got to call me a man and like make fun of me. But then if you give it to them back and start get playing their game, they don't like it. They want to fight and they want to like call you all types of names and say you're a bad person. No, I'm just simply reacting to your transphobia, you know? I don't know. I just wish that people were a lot nicer and they always want to be respected, but they won't give the respect. You know, I try to do unto others how I want done to me, but it's like other people don't go by that. I'm only that person is when I feel attacked or I feel talked about. I have a hard time trusting people, so earning my trust is very hard. But when you do earn my trust, I will love you unconditionally. I will try to get the shirt off my back. You know, I'm not going to like... I'm not going to, like, be nasty unless I feel like that you're trying to back me in the corner. Because I've witnessed so much trauma in my life, like my past life of being addicted to drugs and alcohol and stuff, which I have over five and a half years clean and sober, thanks to a lot of praying, a lot of hard work, going to meetings, having a sponsor, doing my writing, and continuing to make changes in my life, even when I don't want to, leaving these fuckboys alone, you know, that ain't worth a damn, you know, guys that, one, are looking for a girl, trans women, to, to, like, fucking give them money and beat her sugar mom and all that. You know, guys that think that it's all we are for is sex. That we're not lovable or don't deserve love. All we deserve is to have a, a hole to fill. That's what how guys think we are. But in all honesty, you know, we're basically women. You know, we cook, we clean, you know, we live our life the way we are, you know, we, you know, the, I just did my makeup like this to come on here and make this movie, but a lot of times I don't even have any makeup on, I'm just a normal everyday girl that's just trying to make it in this world, and to live a judge, judgmental free um, lifestyle, you know, and to not be judged or looked at as a sexual attraction or um, treated like a prostitute because I'm not. You know, I let my past in the end. And this is a new day, ladies and gentlemen. This isn't like... I did a whole 360 with the way I think. Like, um, I'm a pageant girl. I like to, like, um, perform. I love to dance. I've always liked to be a center of attention. I've always liked to like perform and do shows and act and just have fun with my life, you know? Because for so many years in my addiction, you know, I was 
you know, bottled up and I hid in my room and got high all day long. And I never thought I would make it out of my addiction. You know, God is real. God is amazing. Um, I owe my life to God and my family and friends, the people who supported me through it, through everything. Um, with my transition, my grandmother is my life. Um, <clears throat> she's always been there for me. She's always, you know, was there back in my addiction when, you know, I was stranded in Allentown and she, I needed somebody to pick me up. She was always there for me. She put up with my ass from day one. You know, she took me in when I was eight years old, when nobody else wanted me. Like, I had it rough, you know. I dealt with negativity growing on up. You know, my family is racist and transphobic, homophobic. Anything that isn't like, quote unquote, normal. But what the fuck is normal anyway? We're all a bunch of whack jobs. The way I look at it. You know, but we deserve respect. We deserve love. We deserve to live our lives how we choose. Um, we, you know, are basically just normal people that were born in a wrong body and we're making the changes and strives to better ourselves and become a better version of ourselves. Like, um, for so many years, you know, I hated myself. I hated myself for um, my addiction that I was in and the things I've done in my addiction, and um, it's hard, you know, to let go all the past. You know, I listen to music. I love Mariah Carey. I went to her concert. Um, I love her music. I love listening to her music. Her music has helped me so much. She's one of the greatest singers of all times. I love her. And... I'm glad to know her music. I loved her ever since she came out with Vision of Love. I love that song right from when it first came out. And I've been a fan number one till this day. Um, that's why I'm clean and sober. I listened to that when I was kicking Suboxone. Like, I was on heroin really bad, and I got on Suboxone. I was on methanol maintenance and Suboxone, and it took me three months to kick the withdrawal from Suboxone, but I did it. I got clean February 9th, 2014, and I've been clean ever since. And I think a lot of the times I've done drugs was because of my past, and it was hard to let go. But now I'm talking about it, I'm going to trauma therapy, and I, everything I said I was gonna do, I did. I changed my name legally. I'm getting my gender confirmation surgery, along with um, FFS. So a lot of good things are coming together. I love you guys. Bye.